This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, May the 23rd, 2019. It's the feast of St. Giovanni Battista de Rossi. He was an Italian priest at the Minor Basilica of Santa Maria in Cosmedin, and he lived in the early 18th century. And his story is simple enough. He was a good priest, a good confessor. He worked hard. He showed extra concern for prisoners and for the sick. He opened a hospice for homeless women. And when we say hospice here, don't think home health nurses in terminal conditions. Think something between a hostel, a hotel, and a free clinic. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of his story is that he lived with epilepsy at a time when that was a real, untreatable disease with serious social stigma. No one was 100% sure what epilepsy was. And seizures were perceived by some, especially among the superstitious Italians, as evidence of demonic possession. Still, Giovanni Battista rose up the ranks and became a successful and a beloved priest. He was canonized 117 years after his death by Pope Leo XIII in 1881. Well, today in 1701, when little Giovanni Battista was only three, William Kidd was hanged in London. He was a Scotsman and a sailor who was accused of burying treasure on islands in North America. Now, that wouldn't have been a big deal had he not also been a pirate who stole the gold that he buried. Captain Kidd was one of the first to be at the center of the modern pirate story with secret maps and buried chests of doubloons and pieces of eight and big hats and all the tropes of piracy that would be enshrined in books like Treasure Island a hundred years later. While most of the tropes were attributed to him falsely, Captain Kidd did bury treasure on Gardner's Island in upstate New York. That treasure was used as proof in his trial, but Captain Kidd was likely less interesting than the multitude of stories that have been told about him. Still, he was the beginning of the pirate story, and the literary icons including Edgar Allan Poe, Washington Irving, and of course Robert Louis Stevenson drew upon him specifically in their writing. He died today in 1701 from hanging at the age of 47. And today in 1934, in the great state of Louisiana, on a back road in Bienville Parish near Arcadia, police set up a trap for two spree robbers named Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow. Bonnie and Clyde lived during the Great Depression. Both were born around 1910 and both were listed on the now infamous public enemies list. Their story was horrifically violent, and yet it's been retold with a certain romance, especially in the 1967 retelling starring Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. Some retellings have tried to reframe their relationship as something other than a genuine partnership of equally willing and equally violent participants. But the real story is that they both robbed a lot of people. They killed at least nine police officers along with some civilians, and they did so without any motive other than personal gain. There was no insurance, there was no action to be taken after these robberies for the people who were the victims. People lost all that they had at a time when no one had much of anything. The ambush today was set by Texans Frank Hammer, B.M. Galt, Bob Alcorn and Ted Hinton, representing the Texas Rangers and the Texas Department of Justice, and by Louisiana police officers Henderson Jordan and Prentice Oakley. The posse fired 130 rounds into the car from handguns, rifles, and shotguns, killing both Bonnie and Clyde. As recently as 2019, new films and retellings of the story have been made. And that's a story that's been told on film, in music, in musical theater, and of course on television. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.